Hello and welcome to Immortal Tactics War of the Eternals. This video is kindly sponsored and if you would like to check out the game there is a link in the description. Now this game is not yet out, it, it has not been released just yet, but it will be coming out on July 15th and there will be a demo available in the Steam Next Fest on June 13th. So if you are interested in this at all, then please do add it to your Steam wishlist. And, well, what is this? It's a fast-paced, roguelike strategy with a very interesting turn-based system. There are two armies to choose from for me right now. You can pick from... Yeah, I'm just going to say yes to that. We, are, we, we can pick from basically the good guys, quote-unquote, or the bad guys, quote-unquote. <laughs> Obviously, it's very much dependent on your perspective, which one's good and which one's bad, but generally that is the... That is the sort of um, title I'm going to give them each. Otherwise, you have a, a different amount of units that you're going to be able to select from in regards to your leaders. And they all they both have different skills as well. So, for example, if you are using the Divine Leader, you can see here that he's all about defense and support. And you can see that his spell heals all your units for 4 HP and gives all of them health regeneration status, which lasts for three turns. Now... Personally, I am. Uh, I, I think this game is really intense. So when you get into a battle, and I'm even to, I'm talking about even in the first level, even in the second level, things are going to be very, very tense, and the enemy is going to be all around you. You're going to have to make really good decisions and uh, try to maintain your strategy as much as you possibly can. And I haven't played with this guy just yet, but you can see here that he has the title Sacrificial Offense. So in other words, all of your hero's skills will have an increased damage of one while inflicting Cursed for three turns. I don't know what Cursed is, but we're going we're gonna to play with the, uh, the Angel guy at the moment, and we'll see... If we'll play with the other guy after this. It depends how far I actually get, to be honest. Because, well, <laughs> it's me. You know, it's me. I, uh, I, I generally don't, uh, don't get very far in these things. But, aha! Okay, yeah, so that's actually interesting. So, these objectives, okay? So, these win conditions right here. Um, as far as I'm aware, this is optional. The, uh, the white objective is optional, and the red is very much not, obviously. You're going to have to defeat all the enemies. So, here's the thing. When I first played, the optional objective was completely different. So, I assume it's randomized in some way, because obviously this is a roguelite uh, roguelite game. So, obviously, things are going to be slightly randomized here and there. The battlefields are also going to be randomized and i assume the um the enemy units that you may face are also going to be randomized i'm not entirely sure about that but anyway the enemy is currently moving they get the ability to move first apparently in this case and now here's the thing it uses a, a bit of a different formula when it comes to turn-based systems you know how usually in turn-based games you get to move and then attack in the same turn that's not actually how it works this time we can move and then we attack on the next turn you see so i'll uh, i'll show you how that goes anyway we only have one ability at the moment most of my forces are level one i think they're all level one actually yes they are all, all level one and the archer and the mage both have three hp whereas the knight has five so let's try to maximize his value as much as we possibly can by moving him over here and then what we're going to do is we're going to tell our mage to probably stand round about here and then tell our archer probably stand around about there too actually i would like I, personally i would like them to move a little bit closer to the opponent but that's obviously not going to happen anyway you get experience every single time you attack and you get as far as i'm aware double the experience or well, basically how it works is if you attack, you get one experience. And if you get a kill, I believe you get two experience. Could be wrong about that. It might be changed. Not sure. But from what I can tell, that is what it is. So any single time you want a particular unit to level up more than the rest, then you know what to do. Just focus on getting them as many killing blows as possible. So I'm going to tell, tell my archer to just hold position right here. And now we have the attack phase. Okay, so here we go. Now... 
This is where we get the ability to attack with our abilities. You can use one, two, three, four, five for your abilities when you have them available. And they become available as your units begin leveling up, of course. So unfortunately, at the moment, I only have one ability, which is Sword Slash, and I can do two damage. So let's take a look and see. Um, I think I'm probably going to attack the Knoll here. Um, I think I can attack... Oh, I'm too far away. Mm, now that grinds my gears. Ah, oh, that grinds my gears quite a bit. Oh, uh, well, never mind. I'm going to attack the Treant then instead, because that means that maybe I'll be able to eliminate it just that little bit quicker. Oh, yes, there's a burn as well. Fantastic. So the mage got lucky there and has now inflicted burn. I'm actually not entirely sure if that's a percentage chance. No, it's not. Okay, that's actually super nice. That basically means that any single time I use Scorching Blaze, there is a 100% chance to inflict a damage over time effect, which will cause half damage every single attack phase for three turns. That's actually super, super powerful. Um, you also have to bear in mind, by the way, that each and every ability has a certain amount of uses. You're not going to be able to use these infinitely unless it has the infinity symbol. So, for example, Sword Slash, of course, there's unlimited uses there. The Mage, however, only has three maximum uses of Scorching Blaze. So that's something to bear in mind. And an accurate bow attack is going to also be unlimited. So technically what I can do right now is I can attack the enemy from far away. I think I probably will attack the archer over there. And now the enemies will get their, uh, will get their attacks. And thankfully the Treant is now dead. The Knoll is attacking as you can see right there. I am taking a massive battering with our knight at the moment. As you can see he's at 1 HP or 1.5 HP. So that is really quite bad. Hopefully we're going to be able to protect him or at the very least do something with him that will make it so oh no never mind he's actually crippled so he cannot move as you can see so this is going to be interesting uh this guy has three health this guy has uh, full health okay i guess what i'm going to do is i will move over here and now we will be able to attack with this guy so we're going to attack the null and he's he's leveled up now that's actually pretty nice and we are going to be oh now now i've got a choice to make here do we want to use the archer to eliminate the enemy archer or do we want to eliminate the knoll down here because here's the thing i also have my mage available and the mage is only in range of the knoll so it obviously makes sense for me to attack the knoll here the mage has now leveled up as well and let's go and finish off that archer over there i think we should be okay to save our knight. I don't think our knight is going to be... Oh no, actually, is he eliminated? No, 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 he's he's got a half HP remaining. He has, <laughs> he has just a literal half HP remaining. Now, thankfully, next attack phase, because our mage has leveled up, he has now learned Mystic Healing, and he should be able to heal my knight. So hopefully that is going to work out for us. I mean, it's a bit touch and go here at the moment. All right, so I'm going to just move him real fast. Going to move my knight a little bit ahead too. And, oh yes, the archer also has a healing ability as well. We're probably going to just be using the uh, the healing ability on the archer straight away. Unless we can attack. Uh, we, might, we might go for an attack. Let's just see what happens with it. Okay, so first of all, I am going to be healing our knight so that he doesn't die next turn. And we can also now attack half... Mm, not a big fan of that. I think what I'd like to do instead is actually heal the archer. So the archer doesn't have any direct healing. It has a heal over time effect. So it is going to take a little bit of time for that to begin working, but that is going to allow her to stay alive. Or at least I can only hope it is going to do that. Anyway, I have a massive cleave attack. As you can see, we can destroy these obstacles right here, which I think I am going to do right now so that we can hopefully catch up to the archer just that little bit quicker. Ooh, I over it. Okay, I... Mm. Okay. I underestimated how much damage the goblin was capable of. I actually thought the goblin would do one damage, actually um, half damage, but he does one damage. So that was my bad, and I definitely should have... Um, I should have done things a little bit differently. But uh, yes, I obviously failed pretty hard there. Oh well, never mind. Let's just tell my guys to hold position here... 
Uh, yeah, hold position here. Okay, so we're going to have to eliminate this guy pretty fast. So let's just eliminate him straight away. Yeah, so I really should have probably attacked the goblin with my archer or attacked the archer over there, the enemy archer. That probably would have made the most sense. Oh, well, never mind. You live and learn. You live and learn. But that doesn't mean that the archer has been completely eliminated, by the way. That does not mean that uh, she is completely out of the game. It just means she cannot earn any additional experience as far as I am aware. So anyway, let's just move over here and move over here. Unfortunately, we don't have a huge amount of attack. Um, um, I mean, movement speed at the moment because we're moving through difficult terrain by the looks of things and let me see can i eliminate this one yes i can and there's another level up for our knight in my other um attempt shall we say i was able to move um to the second area and my knight was i believe level five or something like that he really levels up super super fast because he's just so incredibly effective at a variety of tasks so, yeah, that, uh, that happens. Anyway, Mystic Healing is saving the knight quite a bit. And there you go. There's the final kill. And there we are. We actually did complete the optional objective as well, which is actually kind of amazing. And we have now cleared the first area. So you see this little bar here on the right side of our hero's portrait? That basically determines when we're able to use our leader's skill. And the leader skill is obviously so incredibly powerful. It really is. I mean, you saw it on the army selection screen. Basically, it heals all of our units to full. I mean, basically, it heals everyone to full and gives them health regeneration as well. Now, here we go. This is completely different than the, than the last time I did this. You are outnumbered. Escape by surviving 10 turns and wait for help to arrive. You have to kill at least 11 enemy units and take a total of only 14 or less damage to all of your allied units. Okay, now, <laughs> uh, gonna fail this one almost instantly in my opinion, but maybe the kill count one I might be able to accomplish. Okay, we don't have too many enemies. That's, oh, that's pretty good. We don't have too many enemies, okay. Mm, might be all right. This is a swamp tile, by the way. So yeah, when a unit is moving from this hex, that unit's movement speed is reduced by one and the movement speed cannot go below one. Okay, yeah, so I can actually step ahead here if I want to, which I think I probably will do. We'll just go straight in there. And what I'm actually gonna try is I'm gonna go over here to heal the archer straight away. And then the archer, well, I think the archer can basically just stand there. Uh, I think we're going to go and uh, use some, some regeneration as well anyway. So let's just heal the archer real quick. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a healing regeneration spell on the knight. I'm actually not sure whether we should do that right away or whether we should do some damage. Because if we do damage, the treant is going to die next turn. But if we don't do damage, then it's going to take a little bit longer. Mm, I'm in two minds about this now. Okay, I'm going to attack with the knight, obviously. That's going to be the thing that we will do. Yeah, so he has one HP, so then basically any one of my characters can eliminate him, including the archer. So it might make sense for us to do more damage at this point in time. Let's do that. Now, obviously, bear in mind, me doing this has now rendered the knight a little bit more vulnerable than he would have been. And survival is the name of the game at this point. Obviously, that's the big win condition that we need to, you know, kind of take note of here. And now it's just a case of where to move the archer. Well, I don't know whether I really want to move it too close. There are two gems at the back here as well. I'm not entirely sure what gems do, by the way, just yet. But when I picked one up, I did get an achievement. So I can only assume that picking up a gem is very, very good and handy to do. So it might make sense for me to go back there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my archer in the position it's currently in. And we're just going to continue uh, staying around here with the mage as well. Okay, so here we go. Now we can attack. I can go for a cleave attack, which I think I will probably do. The cleave is going to kill the treant at the top and is also going to take out the Knoll at the bottom, or at the very least, it is going to assure our kill of him. So this is going to be good. There we go. Nice two damage to that. 
And then what we're going to do is maybe a lightning bolt. Maybe a lightning bolt would be really, really good. I mean, you can see how much damage it's capable of doing. It's really quite effective. But the question is, do we want to do that or do we just want to do a regular attack? That's the question here. Because I am going to be putting regeneration on the knight. I could also do some damage. Ooh, that's going to do more damage than normal. Huh. Okay, okay. Wait a minute. That's going to... That's basic... Okay. Huh. Oh, now this is... Now, now I'm in, now I'm in two, two minds about this, you see. This is a difficult situation. All right, all right. Wait a minute. So if I... Okay, so if I attack this guy, he's got one HP remaining. The lightning bolt is just going to... Is going to kill him. Uh, I really wish I could hit three enemies with this, but I can't, as you can see. That's really, really bad. But the problem with doing that is that then I cannot put he health regeneration on the knight. So I think what we're going to have to do is eliminate the knoll right next to our knight and do some damage to the treant archer in the back. I think that's probably going to be the best option, so let's do that. There we go. And our health regeneration will be placed on the knight. There we are. Okay, so that's... Uh, I, I feel like that's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And aha, yeah, so environmental damage is also a thing. So basically what's going to happen is on these hexes right here, there's going to be lightning coming down and we need to move out of those hexes. Otherwise, we're going to take damage from them. So that's obviously... Uh, you know, pretty clear. So let's just do that. Let's move here like so. And we are just going to wait around here, I suppose. I mean, generally what I could do is I could move. Might be, might, might, might make sense for me to move a little bit. Now we can attack. Okay, so obviously the knight can only attack here. So he's just going to attack this one. And then my archer can probably eliminate it. Or we can... Mm, no, I think... The mage would do better to apply blaze or burn to this archer over here. Because that's going to die next turn, which is going to be super nice. And we can also eliminate this. The archer has now leveled up as well. And we're... I think I, I'm, I'm doing much better than I was last time. Let's just say that. Because last time I had already, uh, well, sustained massive damage with any number of our forces. And um, yeah, it wasn't looking good. <laughs> let's just say that. Anyway, let's take a look. Hmm. Where do I want to go? I mean, generally, I want to go this way, right? We do want to go this way. So I'm going to go over there. We healed up once more. I'm going to move my archer with the mage. And the mage will move. Actually, I don't want the mage to move anywhere. So we're just going to wait. Also, by the way, using the wait command. So in other words, not moving at all during the move phase. Either has a chance or it does provide that character with a charge of one of their most useful abilities for example mystic healing it has a chance to give me that particular spell back same with lightning storm so that would have been very very useful unfortunately i wasn't able to gain either of those so it seems like i won't be able to attack anything right here which is actually kind of sad but oh well never mind um i am actually going to be placing health regeneration on the mage because it seems like he is quite a bit damaged. So it would make sense for us to do something there. Let's also wait there. Ah, yes. It seems like waiting in the attack phase also provides you with something back. So maybe it is actually only in the attack phase that that works rather than the move phase. So that is really good. Because that means that I might have now gained one of the healing spells. Which is definitely going to be super useful for us. This knoll is getting way too close for my liking. Uh, hmm. Actually, staying here with the knight would be advantageous, but we're going to take massive damage. So, if the mage can heal me, it might be okay. Okay, let's wait here. Let's move. Uh, I don't know whether I can actually move the mage back. Uh, I think I can. Uh, just slightly. Hmm... 
No, I would move out of range if I did that with the heal. Yeah, that's really bad. So I am going to have to stay here. And my archer will probably be moving backwards. Or we could actually use Gust of Bow, which would knock the enemy back. And that is probably going to be something I will end up using. Let's move here. There we go. Okay. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to knock this guy back. Because he's going to be on a swamp tile and he can only move one... Um, one one per turn. So obviously that's absolutely fantastic because that means that he won't be able to potentially attack our, our mage friend. Or at least I hope so. And we now have the also have the ability to do massive damage with my lightning strike attack because obviously we waited in one of the attack phases which now has provided us with all of these charges back for us which is super, super nice. Okay, so first of all I'm going to do an, a lovely cleave attack on these two gnolls here. Boom, that's massive damage right there. And then we can basically get a multi-kill on all of these enemies down at uh, down the bottom here. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Boom, they're all dead. That one is paralyzed, so that's also nice. And hopefully we're not going to take too much damage. No, it seems like everyone's looking pretty fine. My archer is going to be taking some damage from an environmental attack, which is of course the lightning. If we don't move out of the way, I'm going to move over here and get that gem. And then we are probably just going to move over here. I don't really need to move the knight at all, but what I could do is move behind the knoll. So we gain, uh, we, I, as far as I'm aware, we do gain a little bit of extra damage from that, potentially. I'm actually not entirely sure about that, but whatever the case, I could heal. Or I could attack. The question is, which one? Which one do I want to do? Well, I'm going to attack here, because that's basically all I can do with the knight. And then what we can do is we can either heal the knight, or we can kill the gnoll. I think killing the gnoll is probably going to be more useful, because the gnoll does have the ability to deal some pretty big damage. Actually, yeah, three... Well, he, he does one damage, which is... Not that much, if you think about one damage. But the archers, in comparison, they do half damage. So obviously it is quite quite a bit. So we're going to do fireball. Take him out. And now my archer can not move, but can do something maybe. Mm, doesn't seem like we can actually do anything. So I'm going to wait... Uh, which is actually kind of a waste, to be honest, because we, I believe, had maxed out abilities anyway. Okay, so now our knight is taking massive damage, as you can see right here. He only has one HP remaining, so that's not particularly good. You can see we failed the uh, minimal damage objective, as I said. <laughs> as I said that I would. But, uh, you know, can't really do much about that at the moment. So let's just go down here. We're going to wait with the mage move my archer up here because I'd like to pick up the other gem if at all possible. I, again, I don't know what the gems do, but maybe it's some form of currency or maybe it gives me my abilities back. I think it might give me my abilities back, which in some cases might be really good, but in this case, obviously not so much. Can I heal from here? No, I can't heal from here. Ah, oh, how... How extremely saddening, isn't it? Okay, well, I guess I'll just wait here then, once again. Okay, so we'll, we'll just eliminate this, because this is all I can do here. And then we will heal the knight. There we go. He's, he's looking mighty, mighty healthy. Well, much healthier than he was before. And enemy reinforcements coming in. Oh, right there! Okay, they're appearing right next to where the knight is. That is actually either very fortuitous for us, which basically means that we're going to attack them straight away, or they're cornering us and going in for the kill. Which, uh, <laughs> both of those are... Well, one of them is okay, but the other one is not so much. The other one is probably going to result in some kind of... Well, some kind of death for me, potentially. Okay, I'm actually just going to move over here so that these two can only attack me at once. I don't want three people attacking. Actually, the archer doesn't even matter. The archer can attack me no matter what. Probably should have just stayed there, to be honest. Okay, let's go... 
I don't know whether I should even bother going to the gem, to be honest. Because if I go to the gem, I'm wasting another move if it is indeed a waste. Whereas if I move over here, I can potentially be useful. So I'm going to move and try to be useful this time. So let me see, what can I do? Well, I can do some damage. Okay, so we can do damage here, kill the null. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be what I'll do. Let's kill the null like that. There we are. And we don't have any more healing, unfortunately, with our mage. But we can eliminate one of these archers. I suppose I'll go for that one. Doesn't really matter which. Might as well just take our pick. And hopefully my knight is not going to die. I have a bad feeling about this, actually. I think he is going to die. He didn't? Okay, I'm actually super surprised. I thought that this null was going to attack straight away, but he didn't. So that was that was very risky in actual fact. Okay, very, very good. How, how, many, uh, how many turns have we survived? Oh, turn nine. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Okay. Mm -hmm. This might be problematic. All right. So let's move over here. Move over here. Get out of the way of the uh, inevitable lightning strike that is about to befall us. And let's move over there. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to heal the knight if we can. Let's try and get the knight some uh, health region. And now we'll do some damage to the archer here. Not sure whether I should have done damage to the knoll actually instead. That might have been better. Oh well, never mind. Can't really do much about it now. And yeah, okay. So the, yeah, that guy's now dead. So that's that's good. There's the environmental damage. Thankfully, we're not taking anything from there. The enemies are coming closer to us. Thankfully, not attacking. So that's nice. All right. Hmm. What can we do? What can we do? Well, what we can do is I'm thinking we'll probably move the mage back. And then we can move the knight into his position and go for a lovely cleave. But the problem with going for the cleave is that he's going to die, I assume. Right? Yes, he will die if he goes that way. But if he goes this way, he's not going to die. Because as you can see, he's now just healed for one. Bear in mind, these do one damage each. He has one and a half HP. So of course, that's... That's going to not, not work out uh, particularly well for us. Okay, so let's just wait here. Okay, so attack phase. Here we go. I don't have any more attacks with Scorching Blaze, unfortunately. So this is obviously going to be a little bit touch and go. Uh, I will do health region once again on this guy. And actually, I should have just attacked with the, uh, with the archer, shouldn't I? Mm, yes, I should have just attacked with the archer. Well, it's okay. He's going to stay alive. And we are on turn 10. Technically, we have survived. So maybe... Yeah, there we go. There's the there's the success. Okay. <laughs> that was, uh, that was kind of close. Did I actually... Did I not do the kill count? Did I not, did I not do that? Oh, I apparently, I apparently failed to do that. I needed... Oh, I needed 14 kills. But it says total kill count 14. Hmm. I'm actually not entirely sure. Maybe I misread that or something like that. Oh, well, never mind. We've finally reached area three. And okay, now let's have a look here. Okay, another survival mission. That's okay. Collect all the mystical gems present in the game area. Okay. And we fight as one. We survive as one. Don't let any allied units die. That might be a little bit too difficult for me, game. Well, we'll see. We'll see how, we'll see how we do here. All right, all my forces are actually uh, full HP, surprisingly enough. And this this thing has four health? Are you serious? That's actually kind of significant. Um, yeah, this might be problematic. All right, I'm going to go very aggressive at the start here. We're going to go all the way over here with our knight. And we're probably going to move relatively similarly. Actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have Lightning Storm available. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one forward and we're going to move our archer roundabout here as well. I'm actually not sure whether this is a good idea. I think this is probably a bad idea, but we're going to do this nevertheless. I'm going to play a little bit differently this time, which is probably going to result in my demise, but we'll see. Okay, so I can attack all of these, including, well, including my own 
my own unit, which is probably not the best idea. But actually, let me just take a quick look. So, massive cleave. Look at that. That's going to kill one of the archers immediately. That's going to reduce that guy to 2 HP, which will then hopefully be eliminated by one of my other forces. So let's do this first. There we go. One of them has been eliminated. And now what we can do is we can eliminate the dragon hound that, well, that will die from burn damage and then we can do something else here so we could do health region for someone maybe health region for someone would be the most useful or we could go for a massive aoe attack which would do some pretty decent damage huh Actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to move him back. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use lightning on all of them right there. Boom. And they're all paralyzed. I'm not sure what paralysis does. I'm not sure if it's the same thing as crippling where they can't move. But um, I, I can uh, check and see what that actually does. Maybe they just can't attack. It might be that they can't attack. Um, oh, I can't check that now. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, yeah, so he's poisoned, unfortunately, which means that he's going to be taking some damage over time. My my archer has taken some massive damage, but that shouldn't be too bad because if I move my mage over here, we should be able to heal without too many difficulties. Then what we want to do is we want to move the knight over here. And the archer, we probably want to move her back, all things considered. Ow. Okay, yeah, bleeding, not a very nice uh, status effect, that's for sure. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm going to go for... Oh, we can get an insta-kill right there. That actually might make sense. Okay, yeah, I, I know what I'm going to do this turn. That's actually super nice. Usually I never know in these kinds of games what I'm going to do in that particular turn until it comes around. But I knew immediately what I had to do to survive, which is super nice, very intuitive in the way that you can use all your abilities. I like that. Okay, so let me see here. Okay, I'm just making sure, all right? I'm just making sure that everything's going to go well. Let me do this, heal the archer up, then the archer can attack the plague doctor over there, kill that guy instantly, and then we can take our knight, who has just been poisoned by the explosion by the way that the plague doctor has when he dies, so that's not very nice, but otherwise we can now kill the dragon hound, and there we have it, very nice. All right, so enemy reinforcements are coming in. This is really bad. Because there's a dragon hound very close to us. And we do not like those one bit. No, we do not. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, right. Okay, so I'm going to move the mage over here. Going to move the knight. Can I kill this? Mm, yes, I can kill that next turn. But I could also attack it with the mage which I think might make more sense. Uh, the archer, how much damage does do, do these guys do? They do one and a half damage. Okay, yeah, and as you can see, it actually takes half damage for each tile it moves. Mm-hmm, okay. So let's actually move over here. It's still bleeding, so... Obviously, it's going to continue taking damage. And what we're going to do is we're going to do something like this. So I am... Yeah, mm, yeah, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, okay, okay. I think I know what I'm going to do. But I, I, can't, I can't heal then. That's the problem. I can actually... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just, I just realized something. I realized that I have my leader ability. My leader ability has been ready for uh, since the start of this particular level. So that actually makes everything a little bit easier for us. Does one and a half damage. This thing does one and a half damage with its attack. So that would mean that my knight is, well, while he's poisoned, he's going to take half damage from the poison and then another half 
from the attack over there and if he moves then he'll take another half from that and then one on top of it so he's going to very narrowly live if he has to move and all that wonderful stuff so hopefully he won't have to move so what we're going to do is we're going to do a fireball on the golem that's going to burn the golem will be eliminated next turn and let's eliminate this archer as well bear in mind we're not healing ourselves at all here which is maybe possibly bad so we'll see and weakened status i don't know what weakened status actually does but we're gonna try it out okay weakened does that mean it takes more damage or does that mean it does less damage i actually don't know but whatever the case there we go i think it did less damage actually because it says that it's going to do half uh half damage on top of the one that it was already going to deal as you can see and there's oh wait wait we can actually see what this does ah the unit's defense has been weakened, which makes all attacks dealt to this unit have one damage more? Okay, now that's actually super, super powerful. Okay, I'm liking that. And as you can see, my knight, upon reaching level 5, has gained a passive ability. This deducts half damage for every attack and damage inflicted on this unit. Status effects, environmental damage, and auras will not be deducted. And you gain a, an upgrade at level 10. Okay, so that's actually really, really useful for us. I don't have any additional healing with my mage, which is actually kind of bad. But I do have some healing with the archer. But it's very much a case of, can we live until the health region actually helps us? That is the question. The problem with that, if I attack with the archer, which is what I was planning on doing to eliminate the dragon hound here, because it will it will do damage, you see, because look at this. It does one additional damage, right? Because it's weakened. So if we use our regular bow ability, that's going to do two damage, which is exactly the HP that this dragon hound has. And then if I go to attack uh with well something with our mage or with our knight then it's not actually going to kill this dragon hound and then it's going to do one damage and we also have bleed effect i might not survive but i could just use my leader's ability which might make sense or i could just go like this Yeah, that that actually that actually makes more sense, doesn't it? Okay, let's. Should I just use the leader ability to not chance it? You know what? I I think can I can I not do that? Oh, I think I I think I wasted my my opportunity to do that. Oh well, never mind. Okay, let's just go for it. Okay, that one's dead and ah now now i can do it okay fantastic so yeah this is the leader ability this is the first time you're seeing this and when i used it for the first time before i thought to myself whoa that's powerful i'd love to get more of those but unfortunately they are pretty rare so here we go this is it working boom everyone's full hp everyone's ready to continue now personally i would have liked to have kept this until something like turn six or something like that but i well, as you could tell, I was in a bit of a spot of bother, so didn't really want to chance that. Okay. Otherwise, let's wait. Okay, half damage. Obviously not going to do too much. That's perfectly fine. This guy's... What? Was that an environmental attack? I think I was stupid enough to stand in an environmental attack. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think actually that is what was happening right there. I didn't see that that hex had actually activated from the environmental and as a result, oh no. Oh, that is really bad of me. Okay. Okay, well, uh, I, I, I mean, we can still survive. We can still do this. I mean, can we? Can we do this without our most powerful character? It's looking unlikely right now. Let's just say that. It is very much looking unlikely. My, my, my uh, I was going to say my wizard. My, my mage can't actually reach. Yeah, I believe that was indeed an environmental attack. 
That was so bad of me. Okay, maybe I can recover from this. If we can recover from this, I will be forever grateful. Thank you. Okay, let me actually just take a quick look here. Okay, so I can do damage to all of these, which is exactly what we're going to do. I mean, why wouldn't I, right? Very nice. And let's just... It doesn't really matter which one we eliminate, so I'll just eliminate the one on the right side just to make sure it doesn't move out of range, I suppose. And... Yeah, I was killed by an environmental. As you can see right there, that spike just came up right there and did a thousand damage to our knight. No wonder we got eliminated. Really, no wonder. Okay. Ah, good to know, I suppose. Good to know. Okay, yeah. So otherwise, we're just going to eliminate that treant archer. And then we can... I guess I'm going to wait again so that I can get my lightning storm back. And uh, hilariously enough, we are so so fast at killing the enemies that they haven't even received reinforcements yet. So yeah, I think that kind of says everything that you need to know because we were actually doing pretty well. But the problem is my knight is now dead. So we are in a, well, uh, somewhat problematic situation. Okay, I'm, so I'm just going to move over here. And I'm probably going to try and focus on the dragon hound to our top left here to make sure that we have adequate space. I don't, hmm, this, oh yeah, this is bad. Oh, this is real bad. This is real, real bad. Okay. Hmm, I can do lightning storm or I can do the burn attack. I think I will probably just attack like so and we will do the burn attack right here we don't have enough damage that's the main problem at the moment I, ha I basically have my two support characters trying to fight and <laughs> they just don't have enough damage to be able to fight off the enemies at a uh, brisk enough pace i suppose but we i think are going to achieve victory just literally by standing around here at the moment if we can survive this one if we survive this one then it should be fine Okay, so let's shoot this. There we go. And then we can technically do... I mean, we can do a lightning strike if we want to. But I don't see the, the point in that really at the moment. So let's just do a burn. And I believe that is actually a victory after this particular attack phase. Yep. There you go. Wow. I am very surprised that we actually uh, managed to win there. I think it was probably because we were just purely able to kill as many units as we did before my knight went down. And that was just me being a little bit silly because generally I probably would have been able to keep him alive if I'd just been a, a bit more observant. Oh well, never mind, never mind. Okay, so now we're going on to the next one. This is the furthest I've ever been, by the way. And I'm very, very interested to see what happens here. Okay, so what, what is this? Show your leader that you can win without the help and power of him, and your three units alone can save the army. And defeat all the enemies in the game and leave no enemy units alive. All right. Okay, my forces are... Well, um... <laughs> my knight is very damaged right now, as you can quite clearly tell. That might be bad. Yes, I'm going to move on to the gem here. Move this guy over here and this guy. There we go. And now we're basically just going to be healing. Sh should I heal? Should I heal or should I go for some damage? I'm actually not entirely sure. This is a troll right here, right? Yeah, this guy's going to... Oh, he does two damage. Oh, dear. Okay, uh, let me, can I, I can't knock him back. It's going to do knockback damage. I, I, mm, okay, yeah, I can, I can try to do some damage to him right here. I really wish my knight had some kind of ranged ability. Having some ranged ability would help me so much right now, but unfortunately I don't have anything to really, uh, really tell him at the moment. I guess I'll just inflict the burn and we're just going to wait here for some time with the knight he's gonna oh he what okay he missed my archer evaded 
That's only a 15% chance for that to happen, right? Wait. Yes, 15% chance of evading an enemy attack. Okay. Thank you very much, Archer. You've done you've done a good service today. Very nice indeed. Okay, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, we're just going to be waiting for some time. Otherwise, I will actually move my knight over here. And then let's just wait. This guy's going to die instantly, isn't he? Oh, this that, that might be bad, actually. Wouldn't it? Hmm. We're going to have to do lightning storm. Paralysis, I hope, is actually going to stop them from attacking. Yes. This unit cannot attack. Okay, that is literally saving me right now. That is super, super saving me. Okay, so I can do some more damage to that guy, or I can eliminate this one. We are just going to eliminate this one, I think. Actually, you know what? I can attack here. Yeah. Okay, so let's use um, health region with the archer on the knight, and then we'll just attack here. Boom. Okay. Um, yeah, so obviously the mage is going to take some damage here, but thankfully because this other guy couldn't attack because he was paralyzed from the lightning strike, that made all the difference in the world. Re really did. That basically saved us right there. Super, super nice. Okay, so let's move the mage over here. He's going to take a little bit of damage because obviously he's bleeding still. And we're going to move our knight. Actually, do I want to move the knight? No. I will not move the knight. Uh, let's just keep everyone in the same position, I suppose. And we are going to... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, th th the reason why I'm being a little bit weird when it comes to actually attacking the Plague Doctor here is because if you think about this, the Dragon Hound can attack my knight with four damage they can literally attack us with four damage the plague doctor on the other hand only does half damage which in my opinion i mean who cares right who cares about half damage in comparison to four damage so i think what we're going to do is we're going to heal the knight and he obviously can't do anything at the moment he can't move or anything like that which is kind of silly but uh, yeah, I, I didn't obviously intend for that to be a thing. Anyway, we are going to heal the mage. There we go. All right, so now let's see what happens. Because technically what the dragon hounds could do is they could attack the mage and probably kill him uh, next time. Oh, this guy literally almost killed himself. Did you see that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually very interesting. I was not anticipating them doing that. Okay, so the mage is literally just going to run after this guy and try and finish him off. And the archer will stay back here and help out with the dragon hounds. Although I don't think he needs any assistance, potentially. I'm actually not entirely sure. We'll see. Uh, n yeah, I think he actually does. Oh, actually, maybe not. Maybe not. Let's see. Okay, he's full HP now, and now we can attack. Yeah, he still he does need some assistance with these guys, unfortunately. So let's just do the cleave. That does two damage. Let's do an attack on this guy. He's going to be eliminated. Thankfully, he is far enough away so that the explosion actually doesn't affect us. And we can eliminate one of these. It doesn't really matter which one. And there we have it. Okay, whew. We actually survived that when our knight started this attack with 1 HP. Enemy reinforcements are coming in, but I don't think that... I, actually, uh, that golem down there might be problematic. Yeah, he might be a bit difficult for us to deal with, but I don't think it will be too bad, potentially. We'll, we'll just try our best, I suppose. Let's move over here with the archer. All right. Uh, let's have a look here. So, we can go here. That's basically pointless. We can just attack like so. Yeah, let's just attack like so. Kill that. And then we'll do... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to attack with the mage right now. I'd like to get his healing back and his lightning storm. So, we're not going to attack with that. And then he's just going to gain that back. Unfortunately, he is poisoned. I actually wonder whether he's going to die next turn. 
He might actually die next turn as a result of that. Yeah, if he does, then that's obviously really bad, but, well, uh, I can't do much about that at the moment. My archer is too far away, and the health region wouldn't actually make any difference to him now, so uh, he would need to heal himself, which I'm not sure whether he would be able to do. Okay, so let's move my knight into range. How much damage does this do? Two and a half damage! Okay. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll move here. Two and a half damage. That is real dangerous. Um, yeah, that is real, real dangerous. Okay, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Back attack is going to work. Oh, he, he can heal himself. He can heal himself. He's going to heal himself so that he doesn't die. And then we are going to do weakening. We're gonna we're gonna cause weakening to this guy, and then he's gonna take additional damage. We can actually push him back as well if we want to, which I think we might want to do that. Let's push him back. He's enfeebled as well. I actually don't know what enfeebled does, but I would like to find out. Okay. Uh, doesn't seem like it shows me anymore, unfortunately. Uh, well, never mind. Uh, let's just wait here for some time. Uh, let's move like so. Wait. And there we have it. Okay. Whew. Now that was close. And we actually did achieve two out of three of the objectives. Technically, I could have easily gone and uh, picked up the other gem. Uh, technically, I could have done that. Leader skill added. Very nice. And here we go, we're going to the next... Wow, I can't believe I've gotten this far, to be honest. Really can't. Okay, summoning ground. Activate all three summoning grounds by having all three units stand on these tiles for one turn and have the Eternals save you from the evil around. And you need to do this... Uh, you need to defeat all enemy units in 12 turns or uh, take a total of only 14 or less damage. Okay, so where is the summoning area? Is that the summoning area right there? Oh, actually, no, wait. These are the summoning areas. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. That is super, super interesting, actually. I, I, mm, that, that is some pretty high stakes right there. Okay, so I'll tell you what. What I'm going to do now is because I've spent quite a lot of time already playing with just this one army, I'd like to try out the forces of evil. Uh, well, well, technically, I don't know. It very much depends on whether it is the forces of evil or not. But what we're going to do is we're going to go over here, change our army, and we're going to change our army to these guys. Angel of Death will destroy everything in its path, even at the costs... Uh, even at the, the costs of the lives of your heroes. Okay. And we also now have the ability to select an additional skill. Because obviously we got quite far with the Divine Leader. So he has now given me the ability to select another ability with the Angel of Death. Which is, target enemy unit will instantly die. Okay. Uh, what's the other one? All of your hero skills will have an increased damage of one. That That could be really, really useful. And let me see here. Okay, so we can't select any uh, any other units by the looks of things. I'm actually wondering whether we could have three archers or, or something like that. I don't think that that is going to really work, to be honest, but it would be cool to potentially customize that. Anyway, um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do the, uh, do the Angel of Death, and I'm just wanting to make sure that I'm, I'm doing this right, actually. Yeah, I think I am doing this right. Okay, so... I'm wondering whether I should actually take the touch of death. Hmm. I, I, I just think that the the potential for the damage increase of one, I just don't know what cursed is, you see. I'm not sure what cursed is. If it does damage to us over time or something like that, then obviously that's gonna be pretty that's gonna be pretty harsh. Expert is actually available. Let's 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 not do expert, okay. Let's not do expert. That would be a little bit difficult. Okay. Oh, this is actually hilarious. Okay, we're playing as the, well, I mean, again, dependent on your perspective, the evil faction. And we now have to save the weak. 
We need to protect the weak and the innocent from the evils that are surrounded by the war. And you have to kill at least six enemy units. Okay, this should be not too bad. This shouldn't be too too difficult for us at all. But uh, let me um, eat those words very, very soon. What do you bet? What do you bet? I'm going to eat my words. Okay, yes. Um, okay, so this actually deals damage. The vines actually deal damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my mage back here. I'm going to move my knight over here. Move my archer here. So if they want to attack my archer, they're going to have to go onto these vines. That, in my opinion, is definitely the way to go. Let's attack the goblin. Let's attack the gnoll. And I can't attack anything right now, unfortunately, with my knight. So I'm going to have to just wait here for some time. What is that guy doing? Why did he just attack that? Why are they attacking some random stuff? It's probably because they don't want to step onto the vines, you see. They really do not want to step onto the vines, and I do not blame them. There we go. Now that guy's coming over here. Okay. Hello there. Right. Okay. I, th I, think, I think this is absolutely fine, to be honest. I think just waiting here is going to be just fine for us. And now what we can do is we can attack the Knoll. The Knoll does have burn on him, but let's actually do this. We're going to attack here, going to attack here. The Treant is going to die from the burn, and this guy is going to die from the Archer. And my Archer is going to take some significant damage from the Knoll behind, but hopefully that's not going to do too much. Oh dear. The archer is almost dead. Yes, the archer has half health remaining. The goblin has moved onto the vines and has taken half damage, which is actually nice to see. Oh, we have some healing available. Yes, my mage actually leveled up, so he can now heal the archer, technically. So that would be very, very advantageous. This guy's crippled, so he can't move, unfortunately. I, w I was actually thinking that I would move over here and then have the knight take the place next to the knoll. But obviously that's not going to work. So we're just going to wait here. Going to move my mage over here as well. Let's heal straight away. Boom. Very nice. Let's do damage to the goblin. Eliminate him. Uh, let's do... I was actually thinking... Uh, I'm actually wondering what to do here right now. Because I'm thinking to myself, should I put... Region on the knight and then put region on the archer. I think that might make sense. So let's do that Because I know that the archer is gonna take one damage at least Okay, yeah, it's got half HP now Ooh, That that's a little bit that's a little bit tricky, okay, um Hmm 3 HP. Wait a minute, we can move, right? Yeah, we can move now. So let's actually move over here. And then let's move my knight over here. We're leaving the mage a little bit too uh, exposed right now, unfortunately. But I feel like I kind of have to do that to protect the archer let's just kill them all straight away even though we do have a heal available and let's just murder one of these uh, one of these archers there we go the burn will finish it off and they're attacking some random objects to make space no doubt there we go that one's done okay so enemy reinforcements are now coming in they're all goblins so it shouldn't be too bad but i found that goblins are actually quite uh, quite strong surprisingly enough but Shouldn't be too bad for us, I suppose. And let's just move back a little bit. Move somewhat forward. And then we'll just wait here with the archer. And we're going to heal ourselves up a little. There we go. And uh, they've also gained a level two. Okay, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do anything here. I don't know whether I can even attack the vines. Can I attack the vines? No, I can't attack the vines, unfortunately. So we're just going to wait here then. And we're going to wait here with the mage as well, because I don't have any other abilities. He is going to take some damage from this, but hopefully, as a result of us waiting, he's going to have the heal back, so he should be able to heal himself. 
if he needs to. And uh, yeah, we just need to protect everyone. Okay. Let's move down here. Move my knight into position. And we can now move over there. There we go. Okay, so now my archer is a little bit more, um, shall we say, ready for the fight. Let's heal, uh, heal the mage, I guess. Should I heal the mage or should I attack? That's the problem here right now. Because, mm, no, actually, I'm going to heal. going to heal the mage. I think that makes the most sense. And we'll attack the goblin over there. Okay. Well, not too bad, not too bad. Oh, yeah, I should actually take a look at the leader's skill because I actually have no idea what cursed is. I wonder whether we have a description of it. Mm, no, it actually doesn't tell me what cursed is, but I suppose we'll just have to wait and see what that might be. Okay, so let me see here. I can move over here, which I think I will do. And we'll move here with our mage. And the goblin is within range of us right now. Okay, so we can do damage. Yep, that's exactly what we're going to do. Push it into the vines and it's going to die. <laughs> that was nice. And now we're going to do a little bit of a burn right there. And we'll get this guy to attack the archer. And there we have it. So this burn is going to go off, obviously. And it's going to take out the goblin. The archer is taking quite a bit of damage. But we'll, su we'll definitely survive this. And we need to kill at least six enemy units. Well, of course, we're going to be able to do that, hopefully. There we go, we can now move and take it out. Nice. There we go. So we literally did both of them, which is really, really cool. We did both missions and we won uh, pretty handily, might I add. Yeah, pretty handily. Okay, so let's explore the next area and see what else we can do here. Oh my. Oh my, okay, hello. What, 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 what is that? What is that in the center there? What is this? I don't know what that is. They're standing on it. Hmm. That is making me a little nervous. It is making me a little nervous indeed. Uh, let's move in, uh, in range of the, the Plague Doctor here. And I want to murder him as soon as possible. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. We are going to get poisoned from this, by the way. But the goblin is also going to get poisoned, which is really nice. Because that means I will be able to eliminate the goblin now. Which is kind of what I uh, what I wanted to do. And we're just going to... Oh, I can't do that from here. No. Okay, that was... Hmm. That was actually really, really bad. Okay, well... Can I do anything from here? I can't do anything at all apart from use Lightning Storm, which I suppose I will do. Which is definitely not what I wanted to do, to be honest, but I kind of have to do something. Because otherwise, it's going to be a complete waste of a turn. Okay, so Environmental is going to come in. Uh, we need to be very careful of this, of course. Let's move... Let's move over here, I guess. Where else? Uh, let's move down here. Move down here. There we go. All right, that shouldn't be too bad. Let's do a nice attack here. The archer should be able to eliminate this. The mage can hopefully now heal someone. Let's heal the knight. And I'm getting much more used to this now. We're getting into the flow of things. We know exactly what kinds of abilities our units have and how we can achieve the most efficient means of getting victory. So, I mean, obviously, I am far from being the most efficient, let's just say that. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right, you know? We're doing all right. Okay, so let me see here. Let's move like so. Hmm, I'm thinking probably move like this because we want to be as close as possible to the enemy archers. Let's do a cleave to eliminate the barrier between us right there. 
And then what we want to do is, well, we can't do anything, unfortunately, with our mage. But he is going to get the lightning storm and the heal back when we rest in just a second. So I guess that's going to be kind of useful. And otherwise, we're just going to move this guy back. We're going to push him back so that he can't do damage to our knight right away. And we're just going to wait with our mage. There we go. And then we're going to take a little bit of, da little bit of damage from some of the archers, unfortunately. But they are all attacking different targets, so that's very much making things a lot easier for us, at least. And... Hmm... Let's move here. And then we'll move here. And then we'll move here. There we go. Okay, that seems like a pretty decent range for us, so look at this. Now I can do this, which is actually insane amounts of damage. So that's what we're going to do. Oh, yeah. And they are both paralyzed, by the way. Both of these are paralyzed. So we can basically just have a hilariously free turn on our hands. Boom. Eliminate that. Eliminate that. Level ups all over the place. And we can now eliminate the last archers, which is exactly what we're going to do. So I'm just going to move these guys around about here. I basically don't even need to do anything else because... The attack phase, we are all good. So let's attack here. Attack here. And we're done. Fantastic. And, we, oh, okay, so wait, wait, wait. I didn't do the kill count mission because I needed to do... How many kills? How many did I need for that? I actually have no idea how many I needed for the kill count mission. But we did... Uh, I felt like we actually killed quite a few, but it's fine because we actually already completed two missions, which is pretty nice. That means that we now have another, well, we now have one use of our, um, of our leader ability, as far as I'm aware. And, oh, we need to save the week again. All right. And be careful to not let your army get hit by environmental attacks and don't let any allied units die. Okay. So we now have to protect the innocent... The innocent hound right there. The innocent dog. Yes, indeed. Okay. So let me see actually what our leader skill is going to be. I would like to try and figure out what that is. But for now, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to move my mage here. We're going to be a bit aggressive. Just a little aggressive. going to move like so. And then we're going to attack, uh, yeah, probably like this. There we go. And uh, I would like Lightning Storm potentially, but it doesn't seem like we can hit. Ah, uh, no, we can't. We can't hit anything really, really useful right there, unfortunately. So we're just going to go for, we're just going to focus most of our abilities against the Golem. I think that makes the most sense, at least for the moment. Yeah, that is some big damage right there. Oh, my archer evaded. Very nice. My knight is taking way too much damage in my opinion, but you know, that's just how it goes. And hopefully we can now heal him with my mage. So what we're going to do is we're going to move here. He can move. So technically what we could do is we could move over here. move like that i think that is probably going to be better he is paralyzed unfortunately so he will not be able to attack but he can be healed and now we can do damage boom kill the golem and now the enemies will attack uh -huh. oh, oh, one and a half one and a half okay that should be fine I think we're okay. Yeah, I think we're okay. Everything seems to be working quite nicely for us so far. And now my knight should be able to attack again. Wow. Yeah, I, I think, to be honest, I think these guys right here, these dragon hounds, they are, there's just way too many of them right now. I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything here, but... What I could do is I could use my leader ability. Next attack phase, I'm probably going to do that. Let's just wait here. Because I want to see what Cursed actually does, to be honest. So I think that could be quite fun. 
to find out. Let's move over here. Okay, so lightning storm. We can do lightning storm. Lightning storm over here. That's going to hit our own forces. Let's do lightning storm over here, I guess. We can do knockback. Mm. Okay. Let's try out our ability and see what it actually does. Okay, so what is cursed? Unit is cursed, which turns any healing applied to this unit into damage instead. Oh, okay, okay. So in other words, we just can't be healed. Okay, that actually... That... <laughs> Uh, that that could be very bad. If you use the uh, rejuvenation ability, the re the uh, heal over time effect, and then curse your units, I wonder whether that actually still applies and causes damage. Because that that if it does, then that's very very damaging indeed. Okay, let me see here. What can I do? There's a back attack. I could eliminate the archer over there. We could do damage like so. Is this guy burned? Actually, no, he's not burned. That's kind of unfortunate. We could do. Hmm, well, generally I could attack here. We can't really do anything else. Not really, at least. I could eliminate that archer, but that doesn't really do much. So I guess I will just attack this guy. Kind of would have wanted to be a little bit more effective with it, to be honest. But, well... Ah, unfortunate. Unfortunate. Okay, yeah, so the knight has now been taken down, which is, well, not good. I mean, we know how difficult that is, unfortunately, as you can see right here. Oh, he got hit by an environmental attack. Did he really get hit by an environmental attack again? And I didn't realize? Oh, dear. Well, that's really bad, isn't it? Well... I think that's probably it. I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything else. I can attack here. But generally, I don't think I'm going to be able to get any further than this, unfortunately. But, um, yeah. That, uh, that is Immortal Tactics War of the Eternals. In my opinion, an extremely, extremely fun game. And I would highly recommend checking it out through the link in the description. And the demo will be available in Steam Next Fest on June 13th. And it will then also become available as an early access title on July 15th. Do check it out if you're interested in roguelike, fast turn-based strategy. I know I will be playing it at that point too. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.